Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Christina. Today I'm going to deconstruct the animation of these two scenes. I'll show you what's inside the project and we'll look at some layers frame by frame. This is a little experiment, I've never done this format before, but I hope you'll like it. I feel like I can actually show you a lot more by commenting on an existing animation rather than animating on the go. So the main composition consists of two pre-comps, respectively the first and the second scene. They are marked with beige colors and the purple layers below are pre-comps that contain the background graphics. One of the purple pre-comps goes upwards just at the moment when the first scene turns into the second, at the transition. If we navigate inside the purple precomp, we will see a lot of other precomps slightly displaced against each other. They are all the same, absolutely identical. They enter the scene with two parameters animated, position and opacity. We will deal a lot with position and opacity today, I'd even say that 80% of animation is keyframing position and opacity. Each precomp moves downwards and slowly becomes opaque, non-transparent. Let's move inside one of these pre-comps and we'll find many copies of the same layer which contains a cross. Let's see frame by frame how the crosses enter the scene. I animated their scale, position and rotation. Pay attention that there are three keyframes for the scale, not two. Zero, then 111, and then 100. It means that the cross becomes at first slightly bigger than 100, and then goes back to 100. I guess we can call it a little follow through and overlapping action. It's one of the animation principles. And then here and there at random places we see a bunch of keyframes for opacity. These are the places where the cross flashes. Now let's move to the first scene. Pay attention that the 3D button is enabled, because our shield enters the scene with rotation along Y-axis. It's the orange layer. Inside the orange precomp there are just three layers. The keyhole, which is marked in lilac, and two outlines marked in blue. As always, I animate every outline using the trim path effect. I also have a separate, more detailed tutorial on the trim path effect, and I'll leave a link below if you want to watch it. Let's watch frame by frame. Now let's see that big circle with small ones on it. The big circle is the outline traditionally animated with Dream Path effect. And it's that dark green layer at the bottom. It enters the scene also with scale and rotation being animated. Pay attention that small circles are pick whipped to the big one. And therefore, when the big circle rotates, small circles rotate with it. Right, we're slowly moving to the second scene. Let's first watch the transition frame by frame. It's all about right timing and not about complex effects. As you see, the second scene appears right before the first scene disappears. They slightly overlap. The second scene consists of, let's say, three groups and one matte layer. Beige layers are three buildings, fusion layers are these lines below buildings, 
a blue matte layer which is needed for text layers and pale pink text layers. As you see our text moves downwards, part of the movement is covered by a track matte layer, so we see just the ending of the movement. And here again I use the same technique with three keyframes. At first each layer stops a little below the final point and then gets back up to the final point where it stays. Let's watch this frame by frame. I actually think that being able to analyze and deconstruct what's happening on the screen is a crucial skill. Often you would realize that what looks complicated is in fact very basic and you can replicate it at ease. What do we see here? I see the scale parameter being animated, then rotation, then that line goes to the right and it could be achieved either with trim path effect or again by animation of the scale, and then the line stops where the second rectangle appears the same way as the first one did. Pretty easy, isn't it? Let's try to deconstruct how the buildings appear. The pillars move from left to right and their transparency goes down from 100 to 0. This means that they turn from transparent to opaque. The rest of the lines around are animated with, guess what? <laughs> Correct, dream path effect. The same applies to the other building, the only difference it has three stars on the roof, or in, inside the roof. The stars appear with scale being animated from 0 to 140 or something, and then back to 100, where they stay for the rest of the scene. Two tall buildings mainly consist of lines, I've mentioned many times by far how I animate the lines, so I guess no need to repeat. Three orange layers on top are the coins. Let's watch frame by frame how they appear. It's the same trick with three keyframes as I explained before. The windows, purple layers, are animated in the same way as the pillars, but the difference is that they move up, not sideways. Let's watch frame by frame how it happens. Okay, I think I deconstructed the entire sequence. Thank you guys for watching! Please let me know in the comments if all was clear enough and easy to follow what I'm showing and if I should continue this format from time to time. Subscribe if you're into explainer videos, press that notification bell and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!